Hello and welcome. I'm Pauline from Pauline's Quilters World and I'm delighted you can join us in this little um, tutorial. I'm going to show you how I use the Duo tool. This is a tool that we've designed up to help us make our bindings, to make them really, really neat, really fast and efficient. It is also a tool that I can use for doing ruching. So we call it the duo tool because it does more than one thing. So if I'm going to be cutting my strips for my binding, I cut them two and a half inches wide. This ruler measures exactly two and a half inches. So we've got our fabric here ready to cut our binding from. We've got it folded in half and I do fold it the second time so that it's a much shorter cut. Just place the ruler onto the fabric and you can see it reaches all the way across that fabric that's folded into four and you just cut your strips and you just keep working down and it's very fast and quick to cut your binding strips using that ruler. Once you've got your strips cut we obviously need to join them together and usually we put them right sides together and we stitch a diagonal line across here but that can be tricky to stitch that on a straight line on the diagonal. So you can use the ruler because we've put the angle section in here for you. We're going to line this line here which has an arrow B on it. Put that line right on the edge of your fabric where the two pieces meet. Then use your fabric marking pencil and draw your line, your diagonal line across there. Okay, so now we've got a line to stitch on. So we'll just stitch straight on that line, trim it back to a quarter of an inch, press it, and then it will come out exactly straight for you. So that's a very handy thing there to have that angle. Once we've got those all joined together, we then go to our ironing surface and we fold our binding in half. Very simple, very easy. But in, you know, if we've got a really big quilt, let's say we've got a queen size quilt, we have got metres and metres of this to iron up or for those people living in other countries, yards and yards to, to iron up. And it can get tricky trying to line up the edges. You can stretch it, you can burn your fingers. So using our sasha tools, this is the answer for making perfect binding. And I'm going to show you different bindings you can make using these tools. But the idea of this is to thread the fabric in and over that center bar and back down, pin into the ironing board and then we press. But hold the tool by the handle. We'll design it with a little handle on it. We come up from the bottom. We go over that center bar and back down. Just push it back down in through. And that's what it looks like. Now lay that on your ironing surface and use the double fork pin, this is a twin pin, put that into the fabric at the end, pin right into the ironing board so the iron doesn't get caught on it. Now the sasha tool has a curve in it. I've designed that curve there to fit the side of any iron. Now Use your big iron if you wish to, that's fine. They work perfectly fine against this curve. If your iron has a little bit of a lip here, just hold your iron on a bit of an angle. And all we're going to do is hold the fabric nice and straight and we're going to have a little bit of tension on the fabric and we're just going to push that tool with the iron and it will keep your edges absolutely perfect. Move your pin about every 12 to 15 inches. Just keep moving along your ironing surface. Hold the fabric. You can see how I've got my fingers in between the fabric. I've got some tension on the fabric and we just push with the iron. And there'll be no more burnt fingers and I can guarantee your binding is ironed up in half the time compared to you folding and holding it and pressing it as you go. And certainly the fingers are kept free all the time of being burnt. So now we've got all of this made, we now need to join it to our quilt. So what we're going to do, this would be our quilt. We need to leave about a 12 inch gap. So when you're calculating how much fabric you need to go all the way around, I always say cut one extra strip because by the time we join on the diagonal, 
by the time we do our mitres around the corners and by the time we join it we're going to use up most of that strip in, in what's taken up. But this ruler measures exactly 12 inches from this edge here to this edge here measures 12 inches put that on your quilt and mark put a little mark on your quilt exactly at those points then you're going to start stitching right at that point but leave yourself about a 12 inch tail we're going to stitch all the way around we'll do the normal corners like we do come back and we'll stop stitching at this point here exactly where that mark was and we should have about a 12 inch tail then lay those two pieces of fabric out on top of your quilt overlapping each other then use your ruler again and we want to put a mark on this fabric anywhere in that 12 inch gap obviously not right at the end probably halfway along it would be good you can use the end of the ruler you can use that line there whatever line you like and mark put a good mark on there so you can see it so you can see that line now we need to reference that line in exactly the same place on the underneath piece and draw that so now we've got those two lines they're lining up exactly as you can see there you can see they're both lining up exactly open one piece out flatten it out we're now going to use this end of the ruler and we're going to and it's it's marked B you're going to put that line exactly on your drawn line and we're going to draw now once you get used to using this ruler I wouldn't even be drawing it I'd just be using my rotary cutter to cut this so we've got this little flat point here and this angle down here so we've drawn that line so this line here went exactly on that first line we drew okay and we're putting the angle out onto this tail it's facing to the end of the fabric we'll now open this piece out this time this line is going to go on this line but we're now drawing this line into the binding that's already stitched on okay so what we'll do then is we'll cut those off cut those two tails off exactly on that line we'll just get the next step ready for you so here we have our two pieces cut we've got that angle cut oops doesn't want to stay open that angle cut and this angle cut you can see they're going in the direction they should now we're just going to put one on top of the other so we've got a flat edge here that flat edge and this is why we need this 12 inch gap because we've got to fold this bit over that flat edge there is going to line up on this edge of this fabric this flat edge on this side lines up on this edge of the fabric and we're going to stitch across there with our quarter inch seam and our quarter inch seam is exactly that little knob that's been cut off there so stitch across that quarter inch seam all the way across and once you get that stitched across like so it fits that gap there perfect so you can see it fits that gap there spot on perfect so we then go and stitch all the way across here then I put my quilt onto the ironing board I press the seam out and you might like to pin your quilt onto the ironing board to do this because if it's going to flop around it gets a bit difficult but normally we fold this over and we clip it or pin it or we fold it as we stitch but I find it's really easy to use the Roxanne glue basted this wonderful glue and we put little dots of glue right along the stitching line and fold that over and press and just go around the whole quilt and glue and press that down now that sits there perfectly for you to hand stitch 
or if you wish you could come back and stitch in the ditch from this side and use the monopoly clear thread in the top and the bobbin of your machine and when you stitch in the ditch here you're going to be stitching on the edge of this fabric. A lot of times we put our binding on on the back of the quilt and we roll it over and we top stitch it to the front. It doesn't matter how you put your bindings down. I like to machine stitch my binding down if I've got something that I'm making that's going to be washed lots and lots and lots but if I'm going to make a beautiful quilt I obviously want to hand stitch that binding down. So that's just a basic binding but let's show you um, if we want to do a binding like something like this, these little quilts we've got here where we've got the little trim on the binding. We can call it a piping, we can call it a peeper strip, we can call it a flange. Whatever you like you can put really nice little trims into your bindings and we use the sasha tools to do that. And you can see this one here, we've got a tiny tiny little um, strip in this one and because I've done this quilt quilt as you go um, you know made each section up and then joined it together when I put this sashing on I wanted to put that little trim either side of that sashing so then I thought when I put the binding on to bring it back into the binding it really tied the whole quilt together beautifully so let's show you how we do that it's quite simple we will start with the strip that we want to be as our little peeper I'm going to call it a peeper but you may call it um, a flange you may call it a piping this was cut an inch wide. Now I'm just going to fold this in half and this time it folds down to be a half an inch. So we're going to put it into the half inch sasha tool. If I wanted to make a narrower piping I would be folding my, cutting my strip and folding it and putting it through the 3 8 of an inch tool and that's what I've used to do a really fine piping on my binding. Pin with the double pin, hold your fabric just like we did for the binding and push with the iron. Now this really um, shows you how good the tools are and you know I brag about them because I'm very proud of what we've designed and they are originally designed by us, keep that in mind. But like if I'm going to be folding this myself and ironing it, I'm going to burn my fingers all the way. But using the tool, there's no burning. Just keep moving your pin to keep that end anchored. Keep it anchored with your hand on the other end and just keep moving it through. So, you know, if you've got a really lot of this to press up, the tool just makes such a difference. So there's our folded piece. Now what I'm going to do is I cut a piece of my binding an inch and a quarter wide. I'm going to lay this piece raw edges together on there and then I'm going to cut another piece an inch and a quarter wide and join it. So I put the three layers together then I go to my machine and I stitch a quarter inch seam all the way through all the way right across all the binding. When you have that done this is what it looks like. You've got that little folded piece sandwiched between two pieces. Put it onto your ironing board, fold it over, just press the first little bit just press both sides so you get that nice and even on both sides. You want it nice and even. Now that measures an inch and a quarter. So we'll put it through the inch and a quarter tool. Up and back down. And we will pin. Now with the pin we want one part of the pin to go on that little highlight piece and the other side of the pin to go onto your binding. This is where these pins are absolutely fantastic because I'm getting equal tension on all of those fabric layers. Now fold this over and all we do is press with the iron. And you can see how that just folds that fold out for me and gives me a perfect, perfect edge. I haven't got any little folds in there. 
on either side it just folds it out beautifully because normally we're at the ironing board and we're folding it we're pulling it and pressing it and then we go back the other side and do it but the sasha tool does all of this for you and you have no more burnt fingers then you would put that on exactly the same but what we've done here is we're putting it onto the wrong side of the quilt we stitch it on, we join it exactly the same as what we showed you with this tool. We fold it to the front of the quilt. Just put your binding, your glue right on your stitching line. Put some around the corner. Fold it over. And just use a very hot iron and press that to set the glue. Now when we get to the corner, just flatten that out, put a little bit of glue up on that diagonal. Now I'm just going to find which is going to be the best way for you to see this. Fold this back onto itself. Let's get that anchored in there. Press and then keep coming along and pressing all the way through. Then you get that beautiful little paper strip going around your corner beautifully. Then when you get it all glued around, go to your machine with that Monopoly clear thread on the top and the bobbin and stitch right in the ditch. So it really is an effective way of putting a binding on your quilt very quickly, but it gives you a really, really lovely effect. And I just think it highlights the quilts beautifully when we put that little paper strip in there. A lot of our quilts don't need it, but I just think something that you need to highlight, like I just felt putting this dark colour binding on against the background it was too much. If I put one of the bright colours around for the binding, it took away from the centre. But by putting that tiny little paper strip in there, or piping in there it just pulled the whole thing together for me so give it a go um, you know you may have a full set of our tools that have got all the different sizes in them um, which is wonderful or you can buy these all individually but as I said if you want to do a really 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 fine piping like this one here the first strip I put through was I put it through the three eighths of an inch tool and then stitched it on to my one and a quarter inch strip. That gave me a much smaller strip on my piping. Now to show you the other thing that the tools do. I'm going to start out here with the two inch wide strip of fabric. And you know you can use your ruler because you could um, come back and lose a half inch off the ruler or use a normal ruler to cut your strips. We're going to fold it in on either side till it meets in the middle. Okay, press about the first inch. Now it measures one inch and that's the way we use the tools. That's the way the maths have worked out. Whatever the size is on the tool, you cut your fabric double that measurement. Come up from the bottom and over the top. Once again, we'll pin with the double pin. Then we'll cup up the sides and we just gently push with the iron. So that'll fold that strip in on both sides for me perfectly. So just keep working down the whole strip. If you start to lose control of the strip, move the pin. But once you get using them, you'll, you'll find that you don't have to move the pin so often. So there's our strip done. So now we're going to turn it to the right side. We're going to use the ruler. So here we've got an inch markings here. Sorry, half an inch there. Here we have an inch. So we're going to lay the tool on here so that we now have that a line either side of that strip of fabric that we cut. We're going to use a good marking pen. Now I'm, I've got white lead in here, I just want to change it to black. So what I do is I click down the top, hold my thumb on it till I pull this, black, this white lead out. I'll now click down the black lead, which we can see this popped out, and just pop your white lead straight back in. I love these pencils, they're called Bohin. 
I know they won't permanently set if I iron over them. Um, they'll wash out, change colour. So all I'm going to do now is go down through the holes and I'm going to put a little mark. And I'm going to do that all along one edge and then come back on the other edge. Because we're going to make some beautiful, beautiful flowers. So I'll just mark this side now. Now I'm marking them quite dark so you're going to be able to see them but you just need to mark them as dark as you need to to be able to see as we start to stitch. So go all the way along. Now hopefully you can see that all of those marks. So now we're going to grab a needle and cotton and I've got one already started here and I'm just hoping that you're going to be able to see this thread. But actually, I think I'm going to thread this needle onto a black thread so that you're going to be able to see it a lot clearer than what you could with the light one. So we'll just thread this up. If I can get it through the eye. There we go. So we'll just break this thread. Now, and do start with a knot because I, we want to anchor this off nicely. We'll start with the knot. And I just hold the needle up, hold the thread down. So needle up, thread down, hold them both together and wrap that around four or five times. Pull it down and then pull down and you'll have a lovely knot. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some little running stitches across here and then back this way. So I'm just going to put a pencil on. You don't need to do this, but I'm doing this so you can see where I'm going to stitch. I'm just going to do small stitches. When I get to here, and if my needle's on the top, I'm going to take my needle and my thread over the side and I'm going to come back up here and then I'm going to do some stitches across here. When I get to this side, I'm going to take the thread across and I'll bring the needle up here and then I'll do some more stitches. So all I'm doing is when I stop here, I have to take the thread over the edge of the fabric and come back up. Come over, back up. So let's get started. So come up from the bottom Do some little gathering stitches, just some little running stitches. Okay. Now I'm going to take the thread oops, over the edge of the fabric and I'm going to come up from underneath. Can you see that? So I've taken the thread over the edge, come up from underneath. Oops, my thread's going to come out of the little hole. Continue doing your running stitches and it doesn't matter if these stitches are uneven. Nobody will see this when we finish. Up on the top. Oops, it's going to get tangled around the edge. Go over the edge of the fabric again and come up from underneath. And you'll continue doing that. I usually do about six of these diagonals. Come up. Over. You know, this takes a little bit of time, but boy, you can make some beautiful things with these. You can decorate things beautifully. Over, so you can see where that thread's going over. Come back up, we'll just do one more. And this is great stuff to do while you're sitting watching the TV of an afternoon or of an evening. Go back up from underneath. Now what we're going to do next is we're just going to draw the thread up. So you don't need a long thread because now what I'm going to do is go back and pull that. And you can see how it's pulling the edges in. 
and sometimes if you're using a bit of a thread that's a you know not such good thread you might want to use a double thread so you can see how that's ruched the edges in now it's gorgeous isn't it so you just keep going along and pulling it up so I, I do about six angles I pull up do another six and you keep getting your long thread back again every time you pull it up but remember you may be better off using a double thread if your, fabric, if your thread's not so strong. So just keep ruching it all up and when you get it ruched up you can do some wonderful things with it to make some flowers. Now we're going to now roll, you know, you could lay this down, this is not the right sort of quilt, but I could put this over a sashing. I could stitch that on as a sashing. Um, I can roll it up and when I roll it up I use the glue it's my most favorite thing that I use this glue besides my sasha tools I'm just putting little dots of glue all the way along here and don't worry about the glue getting on other things because it just wipes off now we just roll this in and around now as I roll this I usually use the iron to set the glue and just keep gluing and rolling and it holds it all together for you just keep rolling and then we do need to go back and hand stitch it together just little couching stitches to hold it together and here's the quilt that I made quite some years ago and see how I've put the ruched flowers on it they're just beautiful to put down this one here I did is um, I joined two color strips together before I put it through the sasha tool once I put it through the tool it became the one strip and then I gathered it so then I got the center showing up so it's really nice what you can do with it you wouldn't use it all the time to do flowers like this but decorating your you know you may have an old winter coat that you'd like to decorate up or a headband for a, your little granddaughter or something these flowers can be used on lots of things old sweaters if you want to um, decorate them up or old jumpers put a put some flowers some rouge flowers on it so that's just to show you a few things that the um, duo tool does for us it's a really really handy tool I love designing it um, and as I said doing regular binding makes that end join absolutely perfect so you really can't see on the quilts where the start and the finish is there's no bulk on them the the fold just sits perfectly so enjoy hope you get to use one one day but remember the different sashes are terribly important if you've got the set of 10 that is the best buy if you don't have them buying them individually that is absolutely fine we have them all individually but buying them as a set of 10 you save so much money and they are the originals they are the ones that we designed up and they do work perfectly so happy stitching happy binding all those quilts do watch all of our videos on our YouTube channel um, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel because I'd love to, for you to get a notification every time I put a new video out there to teach you how to use the tools that we work. So then also go to our website, pqw, um, sorry, www.pqw.com.au and subscribe to our newsletter because we put out a regular newsletter with lots of things that are happening here at PQW. So, so. Bye.